Got another question here on the enthalpy and entropy topic. So this one focuses on entropy. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video. Okay, so for part A, we've got these three processes and we've got to explain whether the change would be accompanied by an increase or decrease in entropy. And just to give me something to refer to, I've written down the equations for each of the processes. Okay, so freezing of water is liquid H2O to solid H2O. There's a decrease in entropy because solid H2O has less disorder. The reaction of calcium carbonate with hydrochloric acid, the key thing here is the fact that we're producing gas. So there's an increase in entropy because there's a lot of disorder in a gas. And for the formation of ozone from oxygen, we've got this equation here. So you can see the moles of gas are going from three down to two. So that's a decrease in entropy because you've got fewer moles of gas on the product side. Part B now, so we've got to talk about how the feasibility of this reaction will change as temperature increases. So I've put the Gibbs equation in and just a reminder that it's a negative delta H and it's a negative delta S. So remember feasibility is all about delta G being less than zero or negative. So as temperature increases, got to think about what's going to happen to this term here. Notice that we've got a double negative there. So that's, this is actually going to be a positive term. So you're combining a negative delta H with an increasingly positive um, T delta S term. And so the upshot of that is delta G is going to become less and less negative, And so the reaction is less feasible. Moving on to part C, we've got to calculate the delta G for the reaction at 25 degrees C. So the first thing we need to calculate is the delta S for the reaction and then feed that into the Gibbs equation. And you notice I've already written up the formula there to calculate delta S, the sum of the entropies of the products minus the sum of the entropies of the reactants. So delta S comes out at 131 joules per Kelvin per mole. So bringing in the Gibbs equation, just notice that the units that they want for delta G are kilojoules per mole. So we're going to keep the delta H in kilojoules per mole Obviously, temperature goes into Kelvin, but the entropy change needs to go from joules per Kelvin per mole to kilojoules per Kelvin per mole. So I've divided by a thousand there, and that's what you get for delta G. And finally, we've got to find the temperature at which the reaction becomes feasible. So that's the temperature that makes delta G equal to zero. So the Gibbs equation rearranges to that, feeding in the values, keeping it in Kelvin, so 878 is the answer.